Okay, good morning everyone. We are back in Tehillim and we are live on Zoom and we have several people here in person as well. So just throwing that out there, if you want to join us, we're here. The ladies feel uh, strength in numbers, anyone that would like to come and join them. So we're here and we're back in Tehillim number Lamin Ches. We're in 38 and we left off on Pasuk Zayin number 7. Now we were learning last week two perushim, two explanations of this particular Mishnah. And the explanation that we were learning were one in the, in the Rav Hirsch and the other one in the Malbim. And they both come to the same conclusion by the time they get to Pasuk 7, that there's something that is extraordinary that is taking place in this Te'ilim. David HaMelech is Melech Yisrael, he's the king of all of Klal Yisrael. We're 38 Tehillim into, into Tehillim already, and we've seen him over and over and over again express his wonder at the ways of Hashem. We've seen him express his deep, deep levels of Amuna, of Bitachin, of going and following in the ways of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, doing what is right. We've seen his tragic life and the struggles and the difficulties that he has. And yet with every twist and turn and every hurdle that he has to overcome, David never throws in the towel, he never gives up, he just keeps going forward and pushing himself to get to another level, a closer connection to Hashem. And yet in Tehillim number 38, which is where we are, I'm sorry, in, in 39, I apologize. We're holding in 39 by Pasuk 7. In Tehillim 39, where the David HaMelech begins to ask a question which is a bit what we call a pellet. It's a wonder that he's even asking such a thing. And he's basically asking, what is all this about anyway? What is life all about? What is the challenges all about? How come I see people that are prospering, even though they're wicked people, they have s tremendous success, and I continue to have to go through the resurgence of life over here by being pummeled day and night by different things, whether it was his health, whether it was the enemies, whether it was his own children chasing him down, trying to usurp him from the throne. David HaMelech is asking, what's the tachlis, what's the point? Is there a reason for all of the usurim, all of the suffering that you're going to bring me? Now, this is the way that the Rav Hirsch arrives by the time we get to Pasuk number 7. And... The Malbim asks it in a little bit of a different vein, but a similar idea. And the Malbim recognizes that there is a major steer, there is a major contradiction that a person is living in this world. On one hand, we are infused with a neshama tahara, with a pure, beautiful soul, which is replete with all of the grandeur. It's a chilek, it's a portion of the shechina. And that neshama craves closeness to Hashem, wants to be able to be in the, in the, in the realm of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's presence and has desires for Kedusha, for Tahara, for all of the wonderful things. On the other hand, we are trapped inside of this goof, inside of this body. And the body itself is a system of skin and bones and veins and muscles and all different physical things, which is is, is uh, torn away from the spiritual world and very much invested in the physical world. And it has the opposite, really, desire of what the neshama has. So Dovah Melech is asking, again, which is a wondrous thing that he's asking over here, and he's asking, what's the tachlis? What's the purpose? Why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu make such a complicated life where there's body and there's soul that is constantly... Uh, butting heads against each other, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu do you want of me? So we pointed out last week, which is a really fascinating idea into the honesty of David HaMelech. He was not afraid to ask the questions that many people are afraid to ask. And that question is, why is life the way that it is? And what is the purpose? What do you want from me? Now, David HaMelech obviously had all of the Torah behind him. And he certainly understands why HaKadosh Baruch he knows to a great extent why HaKadosh Baruch Hu treats him in the way that he treats him. But it seems that David over here is asking for a deeper understanding and he's soul searching so that he will be able to maximize in his life the 
the situations and the opportunities and the potential and overcome the nisyoinus and the struggles of his life so that he should hit the pinnacle of where he, David HaMelech, is going to be able to achieve. Again, it's not that David is asking a question of why Hashem, what's going on, I have no idea. He has an idea. But he's delving deeper into the question over here so that he should understand for himself on a deeper personal level what exactly it is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants of him so that he will be able to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu in a way that he's never served him before. It seems to be what the, what the question is and we will see in the message that David's not sitting down and learning and, try, and studying things anew and afresh. He has the information, he has the answers there and he works it through in these psukim. So let's go with Rav Hirsch. We're holding over here in Pasuk Zion, number 7. Again, we're in Tehillim Lamites 39. And we're in Pasuk Zion, number 7 over here. And David is answering now. He's going to answer his question. The question of what is my purpose here in this world? What does HaKadosh Baruch Hu want with all the Yisurim, the suffering, the difficulties, the challenges, and the like? What does Hashem want from me? So the Pasuk says, Ach B'Tselem Yishalich Ish. A person should go in the tselem, in the likeness of God. However, he writes, it's only for the hevel, for the, the emptiness, for the vanities, that a person is caught up in all of the turmoil of this world, and he, he heaps up his riches, and he doesn't know how he's going to gather them. Says Rav Hirsch the following idea. The answer to the question of David HaMelech of what it is that we are doing in this world is we were created B'Tselem Elohim in the godly image. Ach B'Tselem Yishalich Ish. Go in your image of godliness. And this is the fact that should guide a person in all of their pursuits in this world. Whatever it is that I'm involved in, whatever I am doing, whatever direction I'm going in, I have to keep in mind, I have, to ha I have to have respect for myself that I am at Selim Elohim, I am created in the image of God. And he writes that man's, the purpose of man's existence in this transitory world that we live in is to resemble HaKadosh Baruch Hu ever more closely, spiritually, morally, in everything that we do down here. And that itself is the challenge of life. The challenge of life is that on one hand we are B'Tselem Elohim, on the other hand we are in a body that is more animalistic than spiritual. We live in a world where we are surrounded by Gashmi, by physicality, by taivas, by desires, by Ram, by wickedness and evilness, by many things that are antithetical to a spiritual Torah way of life. And the goal of a person who is placed into this world is to elevate themselves, to lift up the Tselem Elohim, to make that the most central part of one's life, and therefore in all of their endeavors, to the best of our abilities, we should choose Tselem Elohim, to follow in the ways of the Tselem Elohim over anything else that we have. And he says that it's the attainment of this destiny that we are referring to that will give a person an exalted position over the rest of this universe, the rest of the creatures that are here. The Gemara says, and the, and the Midrash expounds upon it, and we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago in, in the Shabbos Drasha, that man is created last in creation. Which we would say in English that Hashem saved the best for last. Man, he, he created all of the, the earth, the universe, he puts in all of the animals, he sets the stage for mankind, and then man walks on center stage with the pinnacle of creation, and it would seem that we are the, we are the, the apex of this world, and we are, the, we are the, what the world is all about. However, the Gemara tells us that the reason that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created us last is because Hashem does not want that we should become haughty. Because if man would look at himself as the first in creation, we would look at ourselves as the purpose of all of this world, 
So then perhaps we would end up getting very hardy about ourselves. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, you can't. You know why? Because a yitush, a yatush, a gnat was created before you. And therefore, says the Gemara, you see that even a little gnat, a little tiny fly, and it just hovers around old food and trash. Even that was created before you. So you're not as choshev, you're not as great and lofty as you think that you are. So the Midrash on these words expounds and it says, says over the following. And that which it says is that a person, a, a person should look at himself in the following way. On one hand, I am the last, I am the last of creation. And that is, yes, HaKadosh Baruch he saved the best for last. He set everything up so that we are center stage. On the other hand, when we are not doing what we are supposed to do, then a person says to himself, even, I'm not so great because even a gnat, even a little tiny fly was created before I was. So our job is to make sure that we are in, in line and in tune with our Tzalem Elohim. And that is what is going to raise us up over everything else that's in this world. If we're not producing the results of a person that is a true Tzalem Elohim, if we are not connected to the godliness and the ruchnias that is inside of us, so then we have not raised ourselves above the world, we have actually diminished and lowered ourselves. Remember, everything else in the world does what it is supposed to do. The sun will, will, will rise and the sun will set. The waters are going to have the moisture. The animals instinctually, they will, they will behave the way that an animal is supposed to behave. Only a human being was, was blessed with this Tzalem Elohim where we are responsible whether or not we are, going to, to, we are going to produce the results and live our lives the way that a Kodesh Baruch Hu wants us to do. If we do, then we're elevated above everything in creation. If we don't, then we are responsible for lowering ourselves in this creation. Says David Amelch, you know what I realized? Again, he realized and he understood this before, but he's digging deeper into the ideas. And that is that my purpose in this world is to continue, and we'll see more in the Malbim how that works, is to utilize the koichais, the, the abilities that I have inside of myself, to attain the higher levels of existence of Tzalem Elohim. And in that way, I am above and beyond everything else that there is in this world. The spiritual and the moral values that are acquired will, will help a person reach the, the levels that they need to get to. And a person then is going to realize I'm not limited to the mortal world that I have down here, but rather I'm expanding and developing and growing that Selim Elohim that is inside of me in order to allow myself to reach those pinnacles that I'm trying, I'm trying to get to. Says Rav Hirsch, on the other hand, the values by whose acquisition and application would have confirmed and increased his likeness of Hashem would have been permanent even as they have enriched the part of him that is immortal. So I, I guess... My English is not so good today, but I'm not exactly sure what Rav Hirsch is saying over here, but to the extent of that this idea that we are striving and we are growing and we are climbing and we are trying our best to always make sure that we are staying focused in the right place, to focus in on the Tzalem Elohim, that's the area that we're going to grow in. Now I want to read you the Malbim over here. Because the Malbim, the Malbim says, he's answering the same question, but he's answering a little different. And he says like this, Meishiv Loimar, the answer to the question that David is asking himself is the following. Um, What's his question? What exactly is the secret of our nefesh, of our soul? And why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu graft it together with our bodies? So David HaMelech says, Since that we are created in the image of God, What does it mean that we're B'Tselem Elohim? So we're in the image of God. Hashem Elohim is the one that is controlling the larger universe. 
שכמו שהגוף הכללי שואל למעגל הוא גם כן נוסן תכלס חוקים טבעיים קבועים, the universe that we know in front of us is a world that is placed under the guidance of the laws of nature that are implanted inside of the world. Of course, HaKadosh Baruch is the one who's in charge of the laws of nature. And within the laws of nature, HaKadosh Baruch has clothed himself in order to run the world based upon Bechiris Na'ale, his lofty and elevated levels of Bechira of free will. Remember, Hashem, Hashem himself has free will to do whatever he wants, and the world is running in that way. It looks like the world is running just in the laws of nature, but you have to understand that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, first of all, has chosen all the laws of nature, and we see sometimes that he will break the laws of nature, and there are things that are transpiring in people's lives. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is deciding in every single step of the way how it's going to be. Says, Rav, says the Malbim, the whole thing is a mushal, he writes. Tzalem Elohim is a mushal to this world. HaKadosh Baruch is Elohim, he's the God of this world. He's controlling the world at large, the whole universe. <clears throat> he set everything up with, with the chukei atev, the laws of nature. And yet HaKadosh Baruch is the one behind everything and he's deciding the way that everything is going to work. You should know that the nefesh, which was placed inside of our body, our body is an oilam katan, it's a it's microcosm of the world. And just like Hashem runs the world, our nefesh, nefesh which is B'Tselem Elohim, is running our world, supposed to run our body accordingly. That's why HaKadosh Baruch created us in His image. Shigufoi hitzira oilam ativi. The, word, the body itself is, is, uh, is like replicating the physical world. There are, there are laws, there are na- natural powers and energies and abilities in the world and so too in our body. Our nefesh, our soul, which is the Elohim, it runs our body according to free will. Whatever our body is doing, whichever direction it is moving in, whatever we are, whatever we are doing, it's because we decided to do that with our body. So it's exactly like an image. It's like a like a, a drawing, almost like he says, of the godliness that is in this world. The world is running based upon Hakadosh Baruch Hu's decisions, the way the world should run. Our body is going to do whatever it does based upon the decisions that our neshama, that our nefesh makes. Just like HaKadosh Baruch who runs the world, yet when he decides so he can change things around, natural disasters, pandemics, sickness, health, or travel, all the different things that go on in this world, that's all because HaKod, even though there's chuki atever, there's laws of nature, Hashem will decide whenever He wants to change things around. So too there's a body, and the body that we have is an earthy thing, it's a thing that is filled with physical desires and the like, and it has inertia to the world at large. It doesn't want to go and do spiritual things. Nevertheless, the neshama is, is placed inside of our goof, and the neshama now has the ability with its selim elokim, and its koyach abichir, its free will, to make decisions that will break the natural order of the body from doing what it wants, what the body wants to do, to becoming a vessel to do what the neshama itself wants it to do. <clears throat> and therefore he writes, you could become a bria chadash, you could become a brand new creation, that is lios kibbenei elokim, you become, you become like a, you become godly here in this world. And therefore, says the Malbim, you should know that implanted inside of the neshama is a chuk, is a desire to grow, 
that is, as he writes over here, built the tachlis. There's no limits on how much your neshama could actually grow. And because that, that desire is implanted inside each and every one of us, through that we will go up from one, all constantly from one level to the next. We'll get closer to Hashem. We'll have to go from one strength to the next. Until or tira el elokim until we are seen before our Kodesh Baruch Hu in Sion in Yushalayim when the Sheikh will come. So that means he's saying a fascinating thing. He's saying that Hakodesh Baruch Hu gave everybody a neshama, and the neshama that Hashem has given each of us, each one has their own special neshama, but it all has. There's one underlying rule, and that is that it's built the tachlis. There's no limitations in what you could accomplish. There's nothing that is really holding us back from being able to achieve and to reach new levels in our Avedis Hashem. I, the only thing that's holding us back is the body. So Hashem made a Tzalem Elohim to be in control of the body, which means even though the body is one-dimensional and the body is earthy, connected to this world, and it's got all of its lowly tithes and everything in, involved inside of there, the body certainly does not want to wake up in the morning. It doesn't want to serve Hashem. It doesn't want to keep Shabbos. It doesn't want to be Tzniyas. It doesn't want to guard its mouth from Lush and Hara. It doesn't want to say Brach is Bekavana. That's what the body wants to do. The body wants to be a goof, like an animal. You don't see monkeys running around deciding that they're going to just keep their mouths guarded from Lush and Hara. You don't see dogs that are saying Brach is Bekavana because they're animals. The body is an animal. It doesn't want any of that. But Hashem placed the Neshama inside of us <clears throat> and the Neshama has these far-reaching desires and the desires are limitless of what the Neshama could accomplish in a spiritual level as a result of that. So we are supposed to emulate the ways of Hashem and just like HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the ultimate Baal Bechir, the ultimate master of free choice and free will, so our Neshamas must become the ultimate expression of free choice and free will in order to elevate the body to become a vessel that's going to do the will of the neshama. And in that way, a person must constantly go towards the roots of their neshama, which again has no boundaries. There is no boundary, says the Malbim, to the chukas hanefesh, to the desires of the soul. The body has limitations. There's only so much indulgence that the body can take. A person sits down for a Shabbos meal and the table is spread from one end to the other end and their eyes are popping out of the head with all the food that is there and you begin to eat and you begin to eat and eat and eat. There's only so much that you can fill your body up with. It's only going to go so far. However, when it comes to the nefesh, ha-nefesh lo simali, the, the soul itself, is never satisfied. The chuka, the desire of the neshama, is never really satisfied. It wants more and more. And the more that you feed the neshama, the more that it wants, the more kedusha, the more connection that you make with the tzalem elokim, the more Torah, the more mitzvahs, the more purity that the neshama finds itself being able to revel in, the more connected it is to HaKadosh Baruch it wants more and more and more and more. That's why you will see people that are that are, that are raising their levels in Yiddishkeit. And you wonder, how could a person do such a thing? They have this thing in Eretz Yisrael where boys from more modern families, more modern Orthodox families, they go to Eretz Yisrael and they become what's called flip-outs. They flip out when they go there. What does it mean they flipped out? They grew up a regular kid, California, New York, wherever they are. They were involved with everything, sports and movies and TV and girls, the whole, you name it, everything on the spec. They got it all. They go to Eretz Yisrael, and suddenly, as they were taking care of themselves all their lives, they forgot that there is a neshama hatahara, a pure, beautiful neshama that's inside of them. They get to Eretz Yisrael, and they go, hopefully, to the right yeshiva. They have the right rebbe. They start learning in the right way, and suddenly, their neshama turns on. And it, it opens up, and all of these yearnings that have been dormant for so many years that they didn't know how powerful the neshama is, it begins surging inside of them. 
And within a relatively short amount of time, six months, one year, whatever it is, takes two years, whatever it is, the kid flips out, as they say. What does it mean to flip out? I call it flip in. Yeah, but what does it mean that they flip out? That means that they, 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 they change themselves. So people are standing on the side, side and saying, what happened to this guy? He was such a normal kid before he went to Israel. What happened? What, are they brainwashing that child in yeshiva? What are they doing to him? It's not that they are brainwashing him. They are washing out all of the things that are in his brain that he thinks, my life is about my body. My life is about my acquisitions. My life is about my possessions. My life is about having fun and having a blast. It's not what life is about. Life is about there's a nefesh, there's a soul that's inside of you. And Dovin Amelch is saying we were created with Selim Elohim in godliness. And the godliness is that there's a chuka, there's a desire inside the soul that has no rest. It's never fully satisfied. So when that kid gets hooked and linked in to the kedusha of his neshama, how does he change so fast? Because he suddenly realized there's no gvu, there's no boundaries at all in the world of his neshama. He just keeps going higher and higher and higher. That's the Malbim says, David Melch came to this recognition. The recognition was, is that yes, I'm here in this world. Yes, there's a lot of confusing things that are going on around me all the time. There will be yisurim and there will be troubles and difficulties and the like. All of that is true. But what does Hashem want from me? Hashem wants that I should get deeper in contact with my nefesh, with my neshama, and I should be able to express the tzelem elokim that's inside of me. And through that, that's the way in which I'm going to reach these levels of godliness, of happiness, of dveikis, of close to Hashem that I'm striving for. But a person could, if they want, they could miss the boat and they could use the desire that's inside what they think is, there's again like this. And we've spoken about this many times over the years. You have a nefesh that wants, really wants to get close to Hashem. That's really what the, that's really what the soul wants. It doesn't want anything from this world. Not, but there's a chukah, there's a desire that is, that is insatiable, insatiable inside the, inside the nefesh. It wants to get there. If I'm feeding my nefesh, I'm feeding my soul the right things, so then it will just keep cleaving and wanting and striving for more and more and more in the world of ruchnias. And then you'll find a person that they can go to Eretz and they could flip out. You'll find Bali Tshuva, they could flip out. You'll find guys that go to Yeshiva, they're mediocre and they're learning and suddenly they get into the learning and it, it ignites a spark inside the Neshama. They're, they suddenly become the best guy in the Yeshiva because they just, they can't stop. They love it so much. But that nefesh, that soul, it has this desire. It's part of our a component of who we are. If we don't find the, the mark of where that desire is supposed to go to, then says the Malbim, the nefesh, this neshama that you have inside of you, which is seeking and searching for spiritual pleasures, it's going to look for something else in this world to pin its desires on. And then you'll make a mistake, says the Malbim. And we've seen this in the past from the Nitziv and others. You'll make a mistake and you'll end up thinking, well, what is it that's going to satisfy me? There's the things of this world, the pleasures of this world. Like Rav Desla writes, you should know that there is a Yetzahara, the Ruchnius, there is a Yetzahara of Ruchnius, of spirituality, which means that the Yetzahara will convince a person that they're doing things that are best for their spiritual needs, even though that it's all the Yetzahara, but your Neshama ends up getting dragged in to such a place. So says the Malbim, he says, um, <clears throat> and you'll get lost in this world of acquisitions and possessions and gashmias, luxuries and physicalities, and you'll keep trying to acquire more and more and more for yourself, but there's, there's really nothing there. came heaven because they're empty. Vagamla is kind of beyond that. At the end of the day, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna last in your hand either. So this is the world of Bechir, the world of free will. And it's really, it's up to us, says David Amalek. You have a neshama. The neshama really is, is, 
is a built gvul, which means there's no limitation on what that neshama could acquire and what it could achieve. And the more, as we said, the more ruchnius that you give it, the more it wants to be elevated and raised up. It just wants more and more and more and more. You must use your free will in the right way because your body is like the microcosm of the world. Just like Hashem, His elokus, His godliness drives the world to its perfection. Our Selim al must guide our world, our body, our life to its perfection as well with our proper Bechira. When your Neshama gets turned on in that way, so then there's, it, there's nothing stopping, it's going to go full steam ahead. If the Neshama, if we make a mistake and we get drawn after the body and we get drawn after this world, so then there is this desire that the Nefesh has to do something positive, to be involved with something that's going to allow it to grow. So it'll miss the mark and it'll end up indulging itself, thinking that it's doing something that is beneficial for it. It will miss the mark. It's all with the Yetzirah and everything confounding and confining it. It's going to do, miss the mark and it's going to end up going into the wrong direction. Says David HaMelech, it's up to you. You have Bechira. You will choose with your life to do, to do what, you would, what you want. If you want to elevate the Neshama, you'll elevate the Neshama. If a person decides to denigrate and to lower himself, then that is what he's going to do. Says Rav Hirsch further, <clears throat> going back to Rav Hirsch now, and he says that the, in the Pasuk Ches, Hashem And now, what is it I'm waiting for, my master? My hope is in you. Says Rav Hirsch, once that I gain this understanding, which means that I recognize that there is this dichotomy of, of that my goal is to, is to gravitate towards the Tzalem Elohim and to remove myself from the, the possessions over here of the... Question? No. Uh, that <clears throat> that I'm, I'm trying to move away from all this. Now that I understand this, I no longer yearn for those material possessions which others try to gather and say that that's what life is is really all about. So he says, this new awareness has led me to regard all of my life, which I must complete in the likeness of Hashem. Says David, he's the king, he's got the palace, he has the riches, he has the army, he has everything that he wants. He's beginning to realize, again, which it's hard to understand what it means, he's beginning to realize after 38 different Tehillims that we had already, that finally he, he's understanding, but it seems that he just, he's driving home the point at a deeper level. And that is that everything that I do in my life, whether it's physical or spiritual, is an extension of the Avedis Hashem is serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And I see HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, is my master. And even if I am to be able merely to strive to discharge the task, he says over here, I'm ready, I'm able, I got the strength, I know what I need to do. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has made it clear to me. Nevertheless, I still need Hashem's help. I need His love. I need which the, dis the disciplines as it favors its recipients. I don't know why I'm having a hard time with English today, but I have to turn to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in tefillah, in prayer. David HaMelech is saying, I chap Hashem. I understand what you want from me. And I see the path that is in front of me. And I understand what I, it is that I have to do. But I cannot do without you. Because it's a daunting task to be someone that is so spiritual and to elevate and raise myself up from the inertia of the physical world. It's not an easy task, even though that I'm David HaMelech and I'm, I'm living on that level. But I, make, I have the recognition, now I need you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I need you to help me out along the way. So we'll go a little bit further in the Pesukim over here. <clears throat> and he says like this, in Nai Mikol Pishoi Hatzileni, from all my sins you should rescue me. Cher Paz Novel Altesimeni. I don't want to be the laughing stock amongst the degenerate people of the generation. Says Rav Hirsch, he says, please, HaKadosh Baruch, help me to escape my temptations and my, my desires to transgress your will. And he says, also, in the face of all of the other people that are in this world, that they're saying things and they're doing things and they're scoffing at me, they're laughing and they're putting me down. Let it not affect my spiritual and my moral fortitude. 
I want to be able to stay strong. I want to be able to stay focused and dedicated. And I do not want to crumble at all or even weaken in the face of other people. And therefore he writes, Nelamti Layeftahpi, I was silent, I didn't open my mouth. Ki ato asisa, because you have done it. Okay, that's one pasik. I mean, that's one thing. And then he writes in, in, in Yud Aleph 11, Hasame Allah nig echa, I want you to remove the plague from me. Mitigras yarcha ani chalisi, I wasted away from the blow of your hand. Says we have heard the following. And that is, and that is this. <clears throat> I recognize what it is that you want of me. Now, now Rav Hirsch is taking a diff, little bit of a different angle than the Malbim. The Malbim is saying that the whole thing is a struggle of Bechira, of free will. The whole thing is recognizing the Neshama has to lift itself up and override the desires of the body. Rav Hirsch now over here points out that what is David Melch bothered by? He's bothered by that he sees that there's so much suffering and difficulty in his life. And it bothered him that he suffered while other people were having success. It bothered him that he's the king of Israel, that he's the, the one who's doing more than anybody else in the generation to, to do the ruts and the will of Hashem. And nevertheless, he's struggling, suffering. There's blows that are coming to him. There's sickness, there's, there's being chased down. All the different things that we discussed. So he says, at this point, he says, I realize the following. And that is that in order that everything that you, that you bring my way is just to train me and to discipline me to become closer and a greater Eved Hashem. And therefore, I'm, in order to endure all of these sufferings, I have to dive into you at all times that you should, you should remove, you, you should remove the, I mean, I shouldn't need the sufferings to be the chastisement in order to get me to the right place, but rather I should recognize on my own what it is that you want from me, and then you'll remove your finger, you'll remove your hand, which is striking its blows at me, you'll remove that. Now, David Amel seems to be saying over the following idea, and he's saying like this, I've been through a lot. I've been through many, many beatings from you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I understand that the reason that you brought everything to my life is because you want to train me and make me a better person. I understand that. But now I understand what you want from me. And therefore, let me grow on my own. Let me express the greatness in my, in my neshama by itself without you having to come and give me another challenge another suffering, another, another hurdle to overcome, it's very taxing and wearing down on a person. We find this, that in the Gemara says that, that one of the Amaroim came to visit his Rebbe and he saw that he was lying on his bed and he was in terrible, terrible Yisurim. He was suffering badly. So he said, Rebbe, what do you have to say? And he says, I, I, don't, want the, I don't want the Yisurim and I don't want the reward that comes along with them. Because the Yisurim, the suffering that a person goes through, it takes away his focus from being able to see inside his neshama, just develop his neshama. You can't learn the same way when you're not feeling well. You can't daven when you have a fever. You can't do chesed when you're, light up, when you're laid up in bed. You can't run around. So David Allah said, I understand the point. Once I understand, I know what you want from me, Hashem. So remove the suffering and allow me just to come <clears throat> and serve you with all my heart, with all my might. I don't want to lose any of my physical strength over here. I want to be able to, to, be able to serve you in the right way. So David HaMelech is understanding over here. <clears throat> and that's really the next, the next Pasuk. He writes over in the next Pasuk that all of the, all of the, is al in yisarta, because of my sins you afflicted me with your, your rebuke. Ish v'temes ka'ash chamudoi. Every man's going to get rebuked, and he lets whatever is closest to his heart is going to be consumed by moths. Achevo kol adam sela. The foolishness of every man is, is, is nothing. So David says over here, I understand that everything you brought my way was for the purpose of giving me rebuke, of straightening me out, of making me better. That means David HaMelech, he was the biggest son of the generation. 
the greater the person is, the more they are held accountable in the eyes of Hashem. So how could it be that David had so much suffering in his life? He was a tzaddik yisayt oilam. Because on his level, what HaKadosh Baruch expected of him, he had to be refined and refined and refined and cleansed and cleansed and cleansed. There could not be one single trace of impurity that was in his life. So everything that he went through was to elevate him to a higher spiritual plane. David recognized that and he says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, once that I know that to be the truth, so then you can leave me alone because I'm going to do it on my own right now. And he ends off with a plea over here. It's a tefillah that he, that he, asks, he offers up to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and Rav Hirsch writes, what is his final prayer? He says that <clears throat> the, the task is for a person to prepare themselves for the long journey <clears throat> that is awaiting them. The journey is this world, which you're going to take for 120 years, and eventually you'll come to a, a world of peace, eternal peace. The only way that I'm going to get there is if I'm, my mind is strong, I have moral fortitude, I have, I have, as he writes over here, I have mental strength, and my nisham is coursing through me in the right way, and I also need physical strength to be able to have the body that will go all of these years. On that, David the Melech ends off this, ends off this tilim with a special tefillah to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shema svilosi Hashem v'shavosi azin el dimosi al techarash. Listen to my prayers, don't turn away from my tears. Kiger anoichi imach, toisha v'kol avoisai. I'm like a stranger in this world, but I want to get to the real world, Hashem. And the only way I'm going to get there is, is if I utilize my strengths here, and I need your help. You are the one, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's going to help me along every single step of the way. So the Malbim, again, who's answering these same questions, he says over the following idea. And he says, <clears throat> Why would I ever desire good things here in this world, says Davon HaMelech? This is not the world of my re- this is not the world of my happiness and my hope. Ragyesh Tachelis Ala Ulam Acher, my only hope is that for the world to come. Because over there, ki chayolam habahu because over there is where the ultimate reward is going to be reaped. Tachalti Lukhahi, ki Hashem bi atzma hu tachelis at sadikim, Hashem himself is the hope that all sadikim put their faith in. Hashem Himself is the goodness that is hidden away for them. When a person leaves this world, where does the Neshama go? It returns from the place, the Makor, the source, where it came from. Every person is a Tzalem Elohim. Tzalem Elohim means that I am created in the image of God. That means there's a piece of Hashem that's in my Neshama. So at the end of 100 years, 120 years, where's the body, where's the soul going? It's going back from whence it came. Kemoshe Kosev, like it says, Tzadikim Yoishvim, yeah, the Tzadikim will sit with crowns on their heads and they'll be, they'll be nene from the Ziva Shechina. Venene me Ziva Shechina, they will delight from the, from the pleasures of the Shechina. Says the, says the Malbim over here that David HaMelech is saying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I realize Whatever this world is about, it's meaningless. Compa- uh, again, the, it's very hard to understand exactly what David is being mechanished to himself over here. We thought that we saw these ideas throughout the last 38 uh, Tehillims that we have, that David understands the purpose and the meaning of life. But he seems to just be, be driving it in with nails, as we say, and making it even stronger to himself that he understands the reason and the purpose of life is to be this great Baal Bechir, this master of free will, to be a person that is going to be striving to bring his neshama to the place where it belongs. And in that way, says David HaMelech, in that way, we're going to eventually leave this world and go back to the Makor, go back to the source from where we came. So the Malbim goes on in a different place and he says like this, Please remove from me I want you to remove from me all of those things in this world that are causing me to, to be taken away from the ultimate reward. So similar to, to with the way Rav Hirsch writes, there's nothing wrong with a person davening to Hashem 
and asking, please remove this Nisai and this challenge from my life. There's nothing wrong with a person asking HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's very hard what I'm going through right now and it's weighing down on me day and night or it interrupts my davening, it gets in the way of my chesed. Please HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I want to get close to you. I want to be near to you. I'm having a difficult time with this particular challenge that you have sent my way. Says David, I'm allowed to daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, remove those stumbling blocks which are getting in the way of my ultimate joy and that ultimate joy is in the world to come. So now this is precluding the idea that all that a person will go through in this world is a benefit. All the suffering that they're going to endure is all for the good. Of course, we understand that. It's all cleansing. It's all making me better. It's all putting me in the right direction. But David is saying that I have such a strong burning desire to serve you and it is very difficult to serve you under these circumstances. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, remove the roadblocks in my way so that I can serve you properly. Says the Malbim further, and he writes, Yesh roz hashkechim haboyim ala me'es Hashem k'day l'achsiru b'tshuva. But David recognized, and this is, this is what he's saying, that whatever is going on in my life, that in my eyes is a negative thing. And negative means if I feel that it's holding me back from serving you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then there seems to be something that's, that's negative. But I know that the reason that you're doing it is because you want me to be chayzer b'tshuva, you want me to return to you. You feel that on my level, wherever I'm holding, I must have, I must have drifted away. I must not be as close as I was. I must not be using my neshama in the ways that we explained from the Malbim over here. This neshama that has no limitation, that has no gvulim, no boundaries. It can just go on and on and on forever in its cleaving of Hashem. So this neshama that you have given me, Rebbe Nishalom, so I understand that I must have done something that's wrong. And the consequence is that you are now punishing me with this wake-up call, this taichacha, this rebuke that I'm receiving. So I got the message. Once that I get the message, then I'm able to daven HaKadosh Baruch Hu, since I'm doing tshuva, and I'm restoring my relationship with you, and I'm getting more in tune with my neshama, and therefore I'm coming close to you all the time. That's why I'm asking, please remove those things that are now seemingly getting in the way of serving you better. Shema Tfilosi, listen to my prayers. Mitzara Tfilo Shi Shvichas Hanefesh Kavanas Halev. What is Tfilo? This is also something we've spoken about many times over the years. Sometimes we wonder, does Hashem listen to our prayers? We daven, we daven, we daven, we daven, we don't see any change. Sometimes we see even things get worse. Davening, 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 nothing's getting better. The situation is only getting worse. So we say, Hashem, don't you listen? Didn't, didn't I hear in a shir years ago that if you have a tzorah, and something is going wrong, and you daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he's going to listen to your prayers. That's what we believe, right? We're good Jews. We believe in these things. Says the Malbim, let me define to you what tefillah, what prayer is. And he says, Shvichas HaNefesh, pouring out your soul, Kavanas HaLev, with intentions that are there inside of your heart, and you're lifting up your spirit to God. So there's three things he's saying over here. Number one is you're literally pouring out your nefesh, your soul to the Rebbein Nishayim. And number two is there is enormous amounts of kavanas halev. Your heart is totally focused and, and it it's, has all of the right intentions when it's dominating. And the third thing is, you're lifting up your ruach, your spirit, to the Rebbe Nishalem. Says the Malbim, are you complaining that Hashem has not answered your prayers? Is this the way that your tefillah, that your prayers look? Is, are, you, are you just saying the words, please Hashem help me with this, and then you go up further? Or if there's something that a person really needs, are they pouring out their soul to Hashem with kavanas halev and elevating and lifting up their spirit to the Rebbe Nishan. If you daven in that way, says Dovra Melech, 
then the shivasi azina mitzad shani zoyek zoyek lishua, and you should listen. David is saying you should listen to my you should listen to my prayers because I'm crying out for your salvation, Hashem. I recognize that all salvation in this world is going to come from you. Don't silence yourself when you see my tears. Because we know that the gates of tears are never locked. Because when I cry, it arouses the rachamim, the mercy that is, that is, that is there. When I start shedding tears, says David HaMelech, I know that that means that the gates are always open, and that means you are supposed to be aroused to mercy and compassion to have on me. So I'm pouring out my soul. I am doing it bekavana salev with great deep intentions. I'm lifting up my neshama, my, my, my spirit over here, says David HaMelech. I'm crying out to you. I recognize you are the one that is responsible for my salvation. And I'm crying. There's tears in my eyes. So if I have all of those components together, Hashem, you cannot not listen to me. You must respond to me in kind. And that is also David's his amun and his bitachin at this point. That I recognize what the purpose of my life is. I see that you are chastising me for things that I must have done and you want to cleanse me and make me greater. All of that is true. But now I'm, I'm pouring out my heart to you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that I want you to remove these things from my life so that I, in fact, should be able to serve you forward, straight, straight forward. This is the famous question that we, that we asked many, many times over the years. And that is that if everything that Hashem does for us is for the good, so why should we ever daven then? Why should we ever say, if a person gets deathly ill, God forbid, so uh, everything, I, everything that happens in my life is all for the good, Hashem knows what He's doing, so then why should I daven to get healed? It's all for the good. A person is 29 and a half years old and she can't get a shidduch date yet and she's not married and all of her friends are married in the making bas, bar and bas mitzvahs and she, does, she has no marriage, she has no children. Why are you complaining? Hashem knows that that's what's supposed to be. A person gets married, they don't have children 10 years, 15 years. Why? Why, why daven so much? Kodesh Baruch Hu made it, you're not supposed to have children. The Malbim is saying over here, David Melch understood what all the suffering was for. He understood that all of the difficulties that a person will go through in life is just to make them a greater person. But once that I hop, once that I understand that, and I reach that level, then I'm going to pour out my tefillah in a very powerful and concentrated way so that HaKadosh Baruch Hu now should see that I've lifted myself up through the Yisurim. And as we pointed out before, I'm lifting myself up through the prayers itself. I'm becoming an elevated, different kind of a person over here. And therefore, whatever decrees there are against me, whatever you serve, you have in, in mind for me, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you can remove it at this point. I don't need that anymore to be able to serve you. Now, if you'll give me the bracha that I'm asking for over here, that's the way that I'm going to serve you. I just had a Misa the other day. There was a, uh, um, a grandmother and her daughter. They went to Meiron. It seems like it wasn't Lag Ba'im. It was a regular day in Eretz Yisrael. And they went to Meiron to the Kev of the Rashbi of Shimbar Yoichai, which is a place of tremendous tefillah. And the, the grandmother and the daughter, and the daughter, the, and the granddaughter, she was a kala. She was getting married soon. So the grandmother took her there to go to be mispala to Davin for her up and coming wedding and future. They spent about an hour at the cave at the grave of Rosh Bar Yechai. After the hour, they get back on the bus and they're going, they're going home. And the bubby turns to her granddaughter and she says, So, no, what did you daven for while you were there? So the granddaughter says, I, I daven. I daven for that the chas and everything should go well. I daven for my future children. I daven that we should have a bias neman be Yisrael. We should have children that are going in the ways of Torah mitzvahs. We should be a nachas. I daven for my success as, 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 a, as a, a new wife and a mother in Klal Yisrael. And the grandma says, hey, good, Baruch Hashem. Daven for the right things. So the granddaughter turned to her grandmother. She said, no, Bubby, what did you daven for? So Bubby pauses and she says, I didn't daven for anything. The granddaughter says, what? 
but by the caver, by the grave of Rav Shimba Yoichai, one of the holiest kvarim in, in the world. Everybody goes there, they pour out the arts and they daven for whatever they need. Baba, you didn't daven for anything? She said, I didn't have time. She said, well, we were both there for an hour. We had a whole hour by the kever. What do you mean you didn't have time? She said, I started off by thanking Hashem for everything that I have. And I spent an entire hour thanking the Rebbein Shailam for everything that I have in my life. By the time I finished, it was time to leave. I didn't have time to daven for anything. David HaMelech is not a complainer. It has to be understood that way. David HaMelech was able to see all of the amazing, wonderful gifts that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave him in his life. He was able to see the tremendous siyat of the Shemaya that he had. He was the, 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 the most not beloved of all the children of Yishai, and yet he became David Melech Yisrael. He was a person who had Ruach HaKadosh. He lived with the Rebbein Shalom. He, had, he was a master of, of, of song, of spirit, of Torah, of wisdom. He certainly had a lot to be grateful for, but David HaMelech understood. With all of that, all of his graciousness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he realized that he kept getting rebuked and he, kept, he had a very difficult life. And he understood that everything that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does is for a reason. It's not anything, nothing is happening by chance. And the reason is to make me do tshuva. The reason is to wake me up. The reason is because HaKadosh Baruch Hu sees deep down inside my pure neshama and he sees I could accomplish so much more. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I got the message. And now all of these yisurim that you put in my life, it's getting in the way. I want to serve you more, I want to accomplish more, I want to do more. So he poured out his heart in this tefillah, this massive tefillah, this prayer over here, where shvichas hanevish, he poured out his soul. He was able to have tremendous kavan, and he, he elevated his spirit to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and he cried tears. Who could imagine the pure tears of David HaMelech, like the famous story with the Chavitz Chaim. Somebody once handed him the tilim of his mother. After his mother passed away many years before, and the Chavitz Chaim looked at the tilim, and he started crying, and he says, anything that I accomplished in my life, it's all because of the treasure and all because of the tears that my mother put into this tilim over here. You can imagine the tears of David HaMelech. And he was just asking, not that I'm complaining, Hashem. When, you, when you're davening to HaKadosh Baruch Hu to remove difficulty in your life, you're not complaining. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows what he's doing. If we complain, that means we don't think that Hashem knows what he's doing. But we're saying, I know that you brought it to me because you want me to become a better person. Achab, I understand the message. Now remove the Yisurim so that I should be able to serve you in a positive way and not just because I have to overcome the difficulties that are here in life. If a person is in keeping his mind positive and they're working in that direction, then it's not that the Yisurim, chas v'chalila, I'm not complaining to you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Rather, I recognize, kol di avid rachman al-tav avid, everything is all for the good and there's a reason, there's a rhyme, there's a purpose of why you're doing what you're doing. But at the end of the day, I would like to have the energy and the wherewithal and my mind to be in a good place to serve you with all my heart and all my soul and all my might. The Yisr, get in the way sometimes, Hashem. Brings me down, hurts me, makes me not feel so well. I don't have the same energy that I, that I would like to have. So I'm asking you, remove them so that I should be able to serve you properly. person does that, David and Melech is saying over here, how can Hashem say no? How can HaKadosh Baruch Hu say no? If you are asking with all that purity of heart and those pure tears that you have and you're doing it because you only want to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu better, how can Hashem say no? Now, you might not answer right away. It might take some time to get past the suffering. I just found out, Baruch Hashem, just the other day that uh, whatever, uh, a, a young lady who has been married for quite some time already, Baruch Hashem, I just found out after, after quite a few years Finally, Baruch Hashem, she's expecting, finally, all her brothers and siblings, everybody's having children one after the other, and here she is. This takes time. Takes time, but HaKadosh Baruch Hu answers. If you pour out your heart and you daven and you ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu, whatever it is that a person is going through, says David HaMelech, how can you say no? You can't say no, Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't want to say, she's like a parent doesn't want to say no to their child, especially when that kid is with, oh, pouring out their soul. And the tears are coming down and they're being lifted up over here. And they say, okay, I reckon, I know, Tate, I shouldn't have done that. Please, please, please. 
Okay, come, come, you're back in. Beis Hashem, we should be zeicher that whatever the nesiyonos hachaim, the difficulties and the struggles of life are, it should be just to elevate us and to train us and to make us into better people. And once that we recognize that and we realize that and we part our hearts to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, He'll remove those stumbling blocks and He'll let us serve Him the way that our heart so much desires to.